Question 31. Two circles have the same centre O. The smaller circle has radius 1 centimetre, while the larger circle has radius 1 plus x centimetres. The circles enclose a region, QRST, which is subtended by an angle theta at O as shaded. The area of QRST is A square centimetres, where A is a constant and A is greater than 0. Let P centimetres be the perimeter of QRST. Part A. By finding expressions for the area and perimeter of QRST, show that P of x equals 2x plus 2a over x. Consider area QRST. So here's the diagram showing the shaded region, which is the area QRST. It's the difference between the large minor sector QOR and the small minor sector TOS. So it's sector QOR minus sector TOS. Now the radius of sector QOR is x plus 1 and the radius of sector TOS is 1. So area QRST is equal to area of minor sector QOR minus area of minor sector TOS using the half r squared theta formula, which gives us the area of a sector with radius r and angle theta in radians subtended at the center of the circle. We get half times x plus one in brackets squared times theta minus half times one squared times theta. Now I'm not gonna expand this just yet, but we know that half times one squared times theta is just half theta. Now we can factorize out half theta from this term and this term. So A, which represents the area QRST, is equal to half theta times, open bracket, x plus 1 squared minus 1, close bracket. We'll call this equation number 1. Now consider the perimeter of QRST. And the perimeter is made up of minor arc QR plus minor arc TS plus QT plus RS. Now RS is equal to QT, so it's equal to X. And we can use the formula for the arc length of a circle with radius R and angle theta, which is arc length equals theta times R. So perimeter QRST is equal to minor arc QR plus minor arc TS plus QT plus RS which equals x plus 1 in brackets times theta, so this is the radius of the large minor sector, plus 1 times theta, plus x plus x. Now collecting like terms and factorizing out theta from this term and this term, we get p of x, which represents the perimeter of QRST, equals theta times x plus 2 plus 2x. Now, if we factorize out theta from here and here, we have x plus 1 plus 1, which is where this x plus 2 comes from. We'll call this equation number 2. If you look at what we're asked to show in part A, we're asked to show that p of x equals 2x plus 2a over x. Notice that there's no theta variable here. And that's a strong clue. What we need to do is somehow use equations one and two, effectively solving them simultaneously by eliminating theta. So from equation number one, so this is our area equation, I'll just go back to that. What we want to do is make theta the subject and then substitute that for theta in equation number two, which effectively eliminates theta and then we have P of X in terms of X without using theta at all. So from equation number one, I've started off by multiplying both sides of the equation by two. So we have 2a equals theta times open bracket x squared plus 2x plus one. So I've expanded the x plus one squared using perfect square expansion and then minus one close bracket. So I'll just go back to the original equation. I just expanded this here, x plus one in bracket squared, x squared plus 2x plus one minus one. So one minus one will cancel, become zero. So we have 2a is equal to theta 
times open bracket x squared plus 2x close bracket and we can factorise out x from what's inside the brackets here from these two terms. So we get 2a is equal to theta x times x plus 2 in brackets. Now we could make theta the subject. So dividing the 2a by x times x plus 2 in brackets, we get theta is equal to 2a over x times x plus 2 in brackets. So from equation number 2, I'll just go back to equation number 2 here. We have p of x is equal to theta times x plus 2 in brackets plus 2x. We now have an expression for theta. Theta is equal to 2a over x times x plus 2 in brackets. So substituting 2a over x times x plus 2 in brackets for theta, we get p of x is equal to 2a over x times x plus 2 in brackets times x plus 2 in brackets plus 2x. Now this denominator x plus 2 will cancel with x plus 2 here. So we're just left with 2a over x plus 2x. Therefore p of x equals 2x plus 2a over x as required. Part B. Show that if the perimeter p of x is minimized, then theta must be less than 2. Part B mentions minimizing the perimeter. So we'll need to differentiate the perimeter equation p of x equals 2x plus 2a over x that we found in part A. Find any stationary points and test those stationary points to make sure that they are in fact a minimum point. To make the differentiation a little easier, we'll express the second fraction here using a negative index. So p of x is equal to 2x plus 2 times a times x to the power of negative 1. Differentiating p with respect to x, we get p dash of x is equal to 2 minus 2 times a times x to the power of negative 2. And because we need to test any stationary points, we need the second derivative. So differentiating p dash of x with respect to x, we get p double dash of x is equal to 4 times a times x to the power of negative 3. Now note that the second derivative, p double dash of x, is greater than 0, or positive, since a is greater than 0, because a represents an area, and x is greater than 0, because x represents a distance. So any stationary points that we find will be minimum points. So to find any stationary points, we solve p dash of x equals 0. So 0 is equal to 2 minus 2 times a times x to the power of negative 2. The equation can be written using positive indices now. 0 is equal to 2 minus 2a over x squared. Dividing all terms by 2 to simplify the equation, we get 0 is equal to 1 minus a over x squared. Multiplying all terms by x squared to simplify the equation further, we get 0 is equal to x squared minus a. Rearranging this equation to isolate x squared, we get x squared is equal to a, and taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to the square root of a. And we only consider the positive square root because x is positive. Now p of x is the minimum when x is equal to the square root of a, since the second derivative, p double dash of x, is positive as mentioned earlier on. Now from part A, theta is equal to 2a over x times x plus 2 in brackets. But we have a value for x now. x is equal to the square root of a. So substituting the square root of a for x, we get theta is equal to 2a over the square root of a times the square root of a plus 2 in brackets. Expanding the brackets, we get theta is equal to 2a over a plus 2 times the square root of a. Now since a is positive, or a is greater than 0, then 2a over a plus 2 times the square root of a must be less than 2a over a. If the numerators are identical, but we make the denominator of one of the fractions bigger, this makes that whole fraction smaller in value. So because the fraction on the left hand side has a larger denominator than the fraction on the right hand side, this fraction here 
is smaller than this fraction here. Now 2a over a will simplify to 2 because the a's will cancel. So 2a over a plus 2 root a is less than 2 and 2a over a plus 2 root a is equal to theta. Therefore theta must be less than 2.